the Archbishop of Tripoli, Vladimir 24, has called for a halt to the destruction of Libya, the consideration of both sides for the negotiated outcome. <coughs> the specific details of this article can be read online. <coughs> I now mention how I personally got in Libya wrong. I saw romanticism in the sweep of the rebels across the sands and reminding me of that movie Patton where he says, God help me, I love it, as he looks across, he remembers his reincarnation in the time of the Romans and the Carthaginians. And here it is, covered in Roman ruins with the curious Mr. Gaddafi, uh, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi and his equally uh, striking son. And uh, now what I think, uh, unlike in the beginning when I was cheering NATO to come to the rescue of the valiant rebels, but then we saw the rebels had no fight in them. And it seems like the allies, allies were plunging a dagger into the back of a dying Libya to get plenty of plunder for very little effort, as Winston Churchill said about Italy's uh, predation of France after she was attacked by Germany. So at any rate, <clears throat> it, we want to be careful not to destroy their infrastructure and technocratic class, because we learned in Iraq that it sets them back a generation of engineers if you outlaw the Ba'ath Party, which is basically like the Czechoslovakian Communist Party. It's not like Al-Qaeda. Uh, then you also have the infrastructure, which killed 900,000 Iraqi babies in terms of infant mortality rates. It sounds you know, terrible, but infant mortality rates are just statistics, but they add up to actual people dead, and after a few years, it adds up. It's like uh, car accidents going out of control, because so you can say, oh my God, the U.S. would never slaughter a million Iraqi babies, even indirectly, but if you double somebody's infant mortality rate for 10 years, that's what you effectively do, and that's what destroying infrastructure can do. Also, their whole country is irrigated through this giant system that cost them $33 billion to build. And if that gets damaged or poisoned because of using depleted uranium, although I don't know how likely that is, but at any rate, <clears throat> that's what I got wrong, was send in the cavalry, let's rescue the rebels, and then they'll carry out their dashing attacks again. But there weren't many get dashing attacks, so they are forming into a more disciplined force. There aren't any reverses, and it's in there. They can only gain by waiting right now, getting it gradually more supplies from outside uh, and so forth. So it's a waiting game that they can afford to play. They're entrenched in their home country. And what I got right was the abuse by NATO to use this as an excuse to actually bomb the crap out of Libya instead of enforcing a no-fly zone as a protection corridor. Uh, it makes it now impossible to get any sanctions on Syria because nobody trusts the West. Because this was a clear violation of the mandate in spirit and in letter certainly in spirit for sure. Uh, so now people want Brazil, Russia, and China to adjudicate things like this because we're outliers now in the world order. The West is one extreme pole and Brazil, Russia, India, and China sort of straddle the gap between the developing world and the developed world. Uh, so let's see if I can get this right. Uh-huh, you see, right here, Russia and China challenged NATO, and you read about it, read it on wheat bucko. How do we really know what it's like to be Libyan? Okay, so here is uh, some information about Gaddafi's Jamahiriya, which means direct democracy, his idea, and your political parties are strictly banned because there's direct democracy, and that would be a subversion of everyone directly controlling it, but actually it's all controlled by this uh, tightly controlled top-down uh, command and control system along uh, community and tribal and village lines that's in the East German Stasi. Uh, so, uh, uh, so we mentioned some background on the, these are the negatives about the Gaddafi regime on this side here. 
Um, and then here is an example of the Liberty Index. So here's the downside I showed you earlier, the upside of the uh, Human Development Index with the education level and so forth. But here, they're one of the most repressive regimes in the world. Burma, Libya, Somalia, Uzbekistan, Equatorial Guinea, North Korea, and uh, then you've got Belarus, Chad, China, uh, Cuba, Eritrea, Laos, Saudi Arabia, Guinea. You'd think Russia would be in here. Yeah, there they are. There are 11. There's about 160 countries I was able to read on. So this is like the uh, you know bottom 20% of the bunch, and Libya is right at the top. So clearly, if you're not interested in his view of the universe, it'd be a horrible place to live. Now. The other point that we lay out here um, is that uh, they give us 50000 per family. They have the highest development rate in the world, as I showed you before. Uh, the reasons for conflict with the U.S., the gold dinar, uh, maybe the West consider that a betrayal on the WMDs because it's a sort of highly uh, aggressive action against the West after this uh, sort of entente or detente or whatever. They, they represent a potential threat as a self-sufficient Arab nation with all their agriculture and oil able to sustain and develop them without any uh, need to involve the international banking system. And that's a, thing, that's a great risk is for the people that are willing to let the West have whatever they want just to get into power, sell off the great man-made river, which is a people's property right now, uh, paid for, no debt, and to sell off the national industries that are providing these people with cradle of a grave uh, uh, education and health care. <clears throat> Imagine if all that just disappeared and was replaced with a typical system. That would be a tragedy. <sighs> because if you compare them to all those other countries, the people are getting a better service delivery. Although under this horrible repressive climate. So what we do is we get it support them and their aspirations to the, getting their own individual voices without destroying the social uh, framework that has made them at this very high level of development. <laughs> um, so then we lay out these various cases. <clears throat> so uh, the other thing I point out here is that a civilian death of a I don't see how it's more important than the death of these conscript boys. What's worse to do, to kill a random civilian or a 19-year-old conscript boy? So I think you have to be careful about even to talking about soldiers as expendable. And that's all I have for you.